Intense wildfires can pose a significant risk to life and property, especially when approaching inhabited areas. Understanding fire spread and the processes that govern it is important in order to mitigate this risk. There are three main processes through which wildfire spreads. Flame radiation, direct flame contact, and embers. Embers, also known as firebrands, are wind-driven particles of burning fuel. Embers are an especially important and challenging mode of wildfire spread to mitigate. As shown in this photo, wildfires can produce huge numbers of embers, which can in turn ignite fires as far as kilometers away from their origin. In this video, we will follow one wildfire ember and try and summarize some of the many complex factors that affect its journey and its impact. Embers can be generated from both vegetative and urban fuel, such as houses or furniture. As fire burns these fuels, it disintegrates their original structure, and the fire-induced plume can break off small particles which continue burning independently. The type of fuel, the conditions of fuel, the fire conditions, and the surrounding environment can all impact the number, shape, and size of embers generated. Researchers have observed and modeled embers as having cylindrical, spherical, or disc shape. Once the ember is lofted by the fire plume, it begins its wind-driven transport. Different forces act on the ember particle and influence its trajectory. These forces are affected by the wind speed and direction, and also by the shape and size of the ember, as well as the type of combustion it is experiencing. If the ember ignites the fuel it lands on, it has successfully spread the fire. This process is called spotting and allows wildfires to jump over fire breaks and enter structures through small holes. Remember that wildfires produce many embers, which can ignite numerous spot fires simultaneously. When the ember lands on target fuel, different ignition scenarios may occur. The ember may ignite the target fuel with flaming combustion. It could also ignite it with glowing or smoldering combustion without any flames. In this case, the combustion can transition to flaming after some time. It's also possible that the ember doesn't ignite the fuel it lands on. What will happen will depend on the conditions of the ember, for example, how hot or how large it is, the condition of the target fuel, like how wet it is, and the conditions of the surrounding environment. Thank you for listening and feel free to get in touch with any questions or comments.